Urban. It starts here. And a very good morning to you, all of you out there who are, <laughs> who are struggling to get out of bed. We are all still waking up, yes, because of this rain. Isn't it nice to sleep when it's raining? Well, it's time to you, for you to wake up. It's the 25th of March. It's a Wednesday. And it's just the middle of the week. Can you imagine? Well, you're watching Urban today, and I'm Malaika, and I'm excited. Am I? Oh, like I need to wake up. <laughs> I need to let you know what is happening today. Oh, thinking about the topics, that make, wakes me up. We're talking about um, something uh, uh, very, you know, touching, very, uh, something that's thought-provoking, something that makes you question life itself. We're talking about suicidal patients, patients who are going through so much pain they would rather die than, than you know, fight for life in pain. So that dilemma is always left to the doctors. And here in Uganda, suicide is actually something that is shunned upon, not welcomed, and not and is actually illegal in you know in some areas. So we're going to be talking to someone who's going to be helping us understand what it's like for the patient and for the families who are left behind. And then at eight, we're going to be talking about the speech that got everyone talking. Uganda's leap forward. Of course, when I say that, you know I'm talking about General Major General Montu's Mugisha Montu's speech. When he gave that speech, everyone applauded, everyone was in praise of him, and everyone said the one thing that made me smile and laugh. He would make a perfect president, just not for this country. <laughs> We're not ready for a president like him, is what most people said. He's too, he's, but I think someone like that would push you forward, don't you think? People like being comfortable now. Whoa. But anyway, we'll be talking more about that later on at 8 a.m. Make sure you don't miss that. And as always, we like to go straight to the Press Digest, get to know what is happening in the leading dailies, and let you know which papers you should get and why. So we have Joshua Poro and Gaetano Kagwa. Good morning, Malika. Good morning, guys. Are you awake? Are you when, awake? When did his name change from this one? I have my moments. Today I'm just too tired to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too tired. I'm too sleepy Everybody to looks fight. Sleepy on set. You know, <laughs> that rain, man. That rain. Would you just want to be in bed right now? Yeah, that's the nice whole problem. Cold. When the alarm goes off, you first turn it off. Like, <laughs> just five more minutes. And then the next time you realize, like, 45 more minutes. Okay. <laughs> well, it's your job to wake people up and let them know why they should be awake. Can you please give us your signature? It might wake them up. You, you know, the, the signature of this. <laughs> Wake yeah. up! Yeah, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> well, of course, a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Press Digest and Urban today. My name is Joshua Poro. I'm here with Gaetano. We're taking a look at your local daily, starting straight over with the New Vision, which is Uganda's leading daily. And you can always get yourself a copy at just one, I mean, sorry, 2,000 Ugandan shillings. And on the front page of the New Vision, we have security boss wanted for murders. Gaetano, you know, one, before I even go into the details of this story, I had always thought that these murders taking place in the city are connected to very, very highly placed people. Yes. And it happens to be true that the police and military are investigating a senior army officer, Captain Mushabe, for his alleged involvement in a number of horrifying murders and robberies. Mushabe has reportedly gone into hiding following the arrest of his alleged accomplices, and he is attached to the chief agency of military intelligence, that is CMI. CMI. This is rather uh, interesting and also worrying. That somebody so highly placed, an army officer like this, <laughs> is a uh, captain. Uh, you know, is involved in murders along with some accomplices. These but, people uh, are supposed to be protecting the society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're supposed um, to be protecting us, not killing us. Yeah, yeah. Well, we shall see. And we had yesterday here army uh, spokesperson, uh, yeah, Leonard Kunda. 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 Anyway, he says the army will offer its full support to help capture uh, and catch Mushabe. So. We hope that that actually does come to pass and he is called for his Well, his at least actions. The, this army is different from Amin's army. You know? yeah. Otherwise, they'll just steal your panda gari, <laughs> and the next thing you know is there's a kataimba. You never know, guy. Also on the front page, you have Museveni attends NRM Women's Meet, and that uh, is continued further <laughs> on on page number five. 
Uh, if you look at this story here, Jacqueline Mbaba is the NRM's Women's League chairperson arrived at Imperial Royal Hotel in Kampala at 10 a.m. Uh, she sat quietly and then uh, at the reception here, and they, you know, well, the story does continue, and then uh, His Excellency did show up at the, uh, at the, uh, at the meeting. Did and you guys, drama. the other time you were discussing chivalry is dead, mm -hmm. just look on the front page. Mm. Chivalry is not dead. President mm. Museveni was ushering Jacqueline Mbabazi, mm. the chairperson of the NRM Women's League, into mm -hmm. her seat. <laughs> chivalry <laughs> is not dead. Dead. Yeah, but that's real drama, by the way, yeah? <laughs> uh, because, of course, with the ongoing and the fallout. Yeah, the political love. wars and blah, blah. Yes, yes. Let me tell you, people talk about fallout. Mm -hmm. I do not believe one bit these guys fell out. You don't think so? I don't think so. You don't think Mbaba These guys the have been friends way too long to fall out and make us believe that they fell out. You know, no. I have fallen out with good friends after a, a, a long time. <laughs> so I, I can Gaetano, understand. You see your friends, eh? Yeah. Are just friends. Okay. These guys, <laughs> theirs is... <laughs> okay, the things they know about each other... Uh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> There's nothing like falling out. Well, on okay. page, uh, still on page one. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. On the, of, of the new vision. The Cavera ban starts on April. Cavera well, ban? Yes, the, ah. the policy bug thing. And that story definitely continues up uh, on page six of the new vision, where they are uh, duly saying that the ban on the policy bugs or the Bovera. Yeah, tax effect on April 15th, starting with the supermarkets, according to the executive director of the National Environmental Authority, NEMA, Dr. Tomo Kurut, uh, told the MPs yesterday. He was appearing before the Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources to explain the implementation of the ban on mm. the policy and bugs. The mm. first time this thing came up was, I think, in 2003, I, about that. I, I that was a long this. time ago. I applaud this. I, I'm not happy how it sort of came up, and then before you knew it, uh, you know, the usual Ugandan way of doing things. <laughs> you implement something, and then two seconds later, it goes. It I remember there was sugar packed in the brown bags. Yeah. The, the, the polythene mm, mm. and then today we are back into polythene exactly polythene materials are known to have negative environmental and health impacts the buveda do not uh, readily decompose in the natural environment and this is why they have to be banned mm. all over the place yes so all of right. course uh, we need to take them to the factory recycle mm. and hey but you know eh? <laughs> People are going to become jobless. <laughs> <laughs> Page number three. <laughs> Museveni gets regional award. Uh, President Jory Museveni has advised the youth to uphold the principle of patriotism being ad uh, advanced by the NRM government in order to sustain the gains in peace and social economic transformations. And uh, the East Africa book records chronicles interviews. Uh, of course, if you read that, that story over there, uh, you'll see him getting an award from the East Africa book of records. But what that. do you expect? Mm -hmm. It's President Museveni we are talking about. Mm -hmm. The guy Osama plotted to kill and just did not succeed. As <laughs> if this, is, this, is, this is the kind of man we are talking about. He's not just any man. He's a serious man. Don't when he it. gets an award, I'm not shocked. That one is obvious. He has to get an award. <laughs> and well, of course, still on page three of the new vision, youth advice to embrace commercial production, where the youth sat quietly in a conference hall at Imperial, listening to lectures from policymakers on the role they can play in the country's development agenda. Of course. That sure. of course the youth you know. have to embrace all these things. <laughs> mm? Yes, of course. Some sad news over here on page number four mm. of your new vision. ISO director passes on, and after several years of diligent service as head of the Human Resource Department at the International Security Organization, that is ISO, President Jory Museveni awarded Monica Kirawa, Amuti with a much bigger responsibility analyzing and producing credible intelligence for the security services. But barely five months, Bambi, barely five months into her new position as head of data analysis and intelligence production, she passed away on Monday in Kampala. Uh, she'd been battling cancer for quite a number of years. So RIP, rest in peace. Truly, man, mm. the cancer scourge has. Uh, <sighs> Cancer is killing people more than HIV, malaria, TV, TB, all it's of those called, combined yeah. together. Cancer is called the silent killer. It's you know? a, actually by the time cancer starts to hurt, like you feel it's like it's been there for a while. Oh, dang, you're yeah, going. Yeah. You are just Check signing up almost mm. simply. So mm. I think. Oh, by the way, cancer screening takes place at the Uganda Cancer Institute for free. I think. Mm. I think every Friday mm. there is cancer screening at the Uganda Cancer Institute. Very so it's just advisable. You can just walk there, get yourself checked up, yeah. and. You know, you, you can just make sure you don't have cancer or you don't get caught unaware. That's true. Well, of course, on page five of the new vision, we have court order state to produce evidence in murder 
of tariffs where the war crimes court has ordered the state to disclose evidence they intend uh, to use in the trial of 24 people accused of crimes against humanity, terrorism and murder of the Muslim clerics. This story has been moving on for a while and but I think the police is making progress at the end of the well day. Well, it's always good to produce evidence. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the With natural court, thing to it's do. it's about evidence. Evidence, you cannot, you know, without evidence you cannot have... They have confessions. Okay, but confessions aren't enough. How are those confessions uh, gotten? Were they gotten through uh, dubious means? No, not Evidence dubious means. Important. The guy just spoke. Okay. I actually read the story in the Daily Monitor where mm -hmm. the guy told the story. <laughs> you, should, you should be careful. Don't have a routine in your life. Yeah. Not that I wake up in the morning, do this, do that. Do not ever have a routine. We all have routine. No, no, no. You no, wake no, up no. every morning. That's routine. No. You drive to work. That is that's normal. Routine. That's life. That's no, different. No, that's routine, boss. These are things you this create. This is routine. Nice. Gaetano, okay. waking up every morning is life. It's, it's part of life. You have to wake no, up. But it's now, routine. routine are things you plan. Don't you come to work every day? Yeah, that one. Isn't that routine? No, that, I don't use uh, the same route every day. Okay. I don't use the same route now. That's not routine. Okay. Yeah. Well, so you just need to be careful, up, bro. That's routine. What I'm saying is, bro, you need to be careful. Okay. I don't want to come and pick you with a bullet in your head. 35 caliber. Hey, don't talk about that. Let's move on, guys. <laughs> uh, on page number five, also here. Ongwen lawyer at The Hague. It is uh, called Ongwen. Uh, sorry, sorry. Ongwen, <laughs> lawyer at The Hague. <laughs> the member of parliament, Oyam North, Crispus Ayana. Ayena. Ayena, thank you very much. <laughs> really good. Being Luo. I tell you, <laughs> has flown to The Hague to interact with his client ahead of confirmation of his case in January next year. So things are moving along slowly but surely as far as this is concerned. As but Ongwen, lawyer. No, at if the I was Ongwen, I would prefer to stay at The Hague. Mm -hmm. His life is good. The guy came from wearing some torn t-shirt, bogus trousers, and, and old butter slippers to putting on serious suits and yeah, yeah, yeah. some Italian designer <laughs> shoes and having a TV in his room and computers. He has a Begama, kitchen. His life, life is good, Bana. He's living la vida. He's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, but you know, on Wayne's case, is, I think it's one of the easiest cases to tackle, actually. For me, it's not complex. You'd think so. Page number I six so? here. No, so, Bana. <laughs> Page Hi. number six. Government to borrow 966 billion for airport facelift in a bid to boost Uganda's tourism and investment potential. The government has uh, asked parliament to approve a loan of 325 million dollars, which is 966 billion Uganda shillings, for upgrading and expansion of Entebbe International Airport. I duly support this cause, mm. but I'm not sure where this money is gonna go. To the airport, it just said it's going to go towards yes. the facelift of the These airport. These guys have always said this stuff. In the mm. budget, several times we have different roads budgeted for. Mm. But brother, are the roads there? No, come on. Okay. You know, these things take time. <laughs> I know, they take yes. time. Yeah, and the money also takes time to, to be swindled, right? No, 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 no. This airport, I mean, if they've asked for it, if they get it. If you but get Gaetano, mm. the dates we have, how are we going to pay them? You mean Man, we are always borrowing money every day? We are borrowing billions and billions. But this and is how countries forge forward. This is how development takes place. This is how it's done. When you go to the IMF and WHO and you know, and uh, you know, World Bank, you know, this is how things work. The debts we have, it's part of life to have debts. Yes, so tell me how much debt do you have? Ah, me leave me out you just said it's part of life, mm. so it cannot be part of life if you don't have a debt. Ah. Page number seven. Government names priority roads in 2015-16 budget. Yes, government has outlined priority roads it intends to work on in the next financial year as a result of the budget for the works and transport sector is set to increase from the current 2.3 trillion shillings uh, to 2.5 trillion shillings in the 2015-2016 financial year. And some of those roads, Mbari and Kokonjeru, Ishaka Rujenzi, Katunguru, Fort Foto, Kampala Mukono, Nakarama Tirinyi Mbale, Hima Katunguku, and the rest and so on. Man, I'm not seeing any little road here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry, they'll get there eventually. Really? Phases, phases, phases. Okay, and of course, uh, Oriem defends the hire of U.S. firm. That is State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Okel Oriem, has defended the hiring of a U.S. public relations company to clear Uganda's tainted international image following the enactment of the Anti-Homosexuality Act in 2014. You know, when I was in the U.S., those guys don't know anything except that Uganda kills gays. Mm -hmm. they, you know, oh, your president is so brutal, your president is so bad. And then I'm like, okay, just tell me one wrong thing he did. He's like, of course, uh, the law he passed against the gays, said, no, that was passed by the act of parliament. It wasn't the president. You know? <laughs> and eventually they are speechless because they know the country is bad. <laughs> but they only know one thing about the country. Okay, yeah. I know it's a small country, but... 
<laughs> Going on to page number eight. Yep. Oh, you've forgotten something before you go to page eight. Okay. We have this minister who is 91 years old. Yes, Mateke. <laughs> Mateke. Yes. Oh, okay, he's 73 years yes. old. And they say that he is hungry for work. Has he been unemployed for a very long time? <laughs> well, at 73 years, the newly appointed state minister for regional cooperation, Philemon Mateke, says he's hungrier for work than money. These guys <laughs> be lying. <laughs> During a handover ceremony held at the ministry's boardroom yesterday, the new minister clearly said that his success today is a result of taking on a responsibility and doing it wholeheartedly. But I loved his designer. Look at his shirt, <laughs> look at his tie, and then his trouser was oversized. Oh, it was just... <laughs> <laughs> Leave the guy. <laughs> no, no, I cannot leave the guy. You're a minister. You need to be presentable. He's 73 minister. years old. Minister. You see, the mere fact that you accept the responsibility of being a minister does, that means actually that your age does not count. He's you need to look yeah. responsible and presentable at the same time. Mommy. You cannot keep on showing up putting on oversized trousers but because I am 73 years Then resign the position, my brother. Cut the guy some slack. Okay, he'll... You know, Cut him some slack. Mm. Let him go back to his village. <laughs> this guy. Hello? Page number eight right here in the new vision. Build planned houses says Rugunda. The mm. Prime Minister, Dr. Rukana Rugunda, has warned real estate dealers against setting up houses which lack proper plans. So uh, that's what he's pushing over there. And then further on down over here, um, Kleje urges senior UPDF uh, officers to declare their wealth. Uh, senior Uganda People's Defense officers have been asked to declare their wealth or risk being targeted by the Inspector General of Government. Mm. Mm. Well, of course, that is how we be, right? Yeah, yeah we are looking at, uh, taking a look at the New Vision, which is a Uganda's leading daily uh, on the Press Digest on Urban Today. My name is Joshua Poor, of course, I'm here with Gaetano. Right now, let's go for a short break, but the Press Digest does continue right after that.